also got reaction from the Chief of Staff to the President, Femi Bajabiamila, um, the National Chairman of the APC, Gandu Jay, and the Minister of the FCT, um, Yesom Wike. But let's now get into how, um, what this judgment means for the APC, as we bring in the National Publicity Secretary of the APC, Felix Moka, who joins me um, virtually on the news. Good to have you join us. Much. Pardon me. Right, so let's get um, how, how your party is reacting to this party, particular judgment. Like, were you surprised by this judgment? Um, no, thank you very much. First of all, let me congratulate uh, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, Bola Metinubu, on this landmark decision by the Supreme Court of our country. Uh, no, we were not surprised by this outcome. We have... Uh, been very clear, and we were confident from the get-go. Uh, this was the judgment we expected because the facts that the petitioners took to court had no way out. There was no basis, uh, quite frankly, for all of the uh, arguments that were made before the courts. So the petitioners court, the, the first court, court of appeal, ruled on this matter and was just affirmed by the Supreme Court. So we're not, there's nothing about it that's surprising. We were very confident that this would be the outcome because the facts uh, would only lend itself to, to this very outcome. Hmm. Um, some, has, some have said because of this judgment or as a result of this judgment, um, the question around legitimacy is now laid to rest. Um, are you also heaving a sigh of relief you know, in that regard? Does, was this a question of legitimacy for you or just affirmation? Look, it, it was never about legitimacy because the institution that's charged by law with the duty to conduct elections conducted the elections, and that's INEC. Uh, they observed all the protocols laid down by law and you know, counted the votes and declared the results in favor of Mr. President. So the question of legitimacy was never an issue for us. Those who uh, tried to do so, to raise that question, did so for their own very narrow, selfish, uh, political, you know, purpose. Uh, so for us, this is really, look, Nigeria is a constitutional order. Uh, we are a democracy where three arms of government function, you know, uh, doing their jobs assigned by the constitution. The courts were given the duty to adjudicate between disputes, uh, in disputes between uh, citizens or between citizens and the government. So when these cases were filed in court by the Labour Party and uh, the People's Democratic Party, we knew that a day will come, a day like this will come, when that institution of our courts will have the final say in the matter. And today, they rested this matter. It was, the judgment was very eloquent. Uh, it was completely definitive, and it was final. And I hope that our friends in the opposition will take this as the end of this matter and, uh, you know, reach out and you know, work with the government to begin to focus on what is important, which is the task of you know, getting uh, governance uh, going and going in the right direction. Mm. And the president has now reacted to this particular judgment. The president said, um, with his victory, it's time for more work. He also said that everyone must now come together and work um, for the good of Nigeria, that this is, the, this is about the future of the country. And so we're just going to give you that reaction coming from the president. I've started from day one to work hard, regardless of, you know, uh, the court cases, okay? And uh, just strengthen my resolve uh, to do more. A challenge of this nature, uh, and a, a future of this nature, is more work, and more hard work, more dedication. And just appeal to the sense of patriotism of Nigeria to have a change of mindset. Let us be positive about our country, be ready to contribute in all ways possible. There's no promise of El Dorado from day one. We're all in this boat of diversity, a member of the same family, living in the same house, but stay in different rooms. And it is important that we recognize 
that we have no other country but this one. So we better be committed to it, not for the sake of our own self aggrandizement. Our commitment to the values, the creed of dedication, patriotism, and commitment to the value of this country. All right, that was the president, uh, President Bola Ametunubu, reacting to the Supreme Court judgment. Um, we still have um, Felix Moka, who is the APC Publicity Secretary, with us. I want to get your reaction to that statement um, from the president. We have no country but this one, so says the president, and I agree. This is a moment, this decision today is a clarion call to everyone, every Nigerian, irrespective of your political persuasion or political party affiliation, or for that matter of your you know, gender or you know, um, origins or religion. It's a solemn call to Nigerians, to all of us, to stand up for our country, to stand up shoulder to shoulder, to tackle those challenges that confront us as a people. This is the time. There's no better time for everyone both those who went to the court and those who, who lost and those who won to come together uh, to begin to put Nigeria first and to put the people of Nigeria first and to you know, fight and battle for their interests rather than for these partisan interests. That should be rested. Mm. So you know, I agree with Mr. President that we need now to focus on the well-being of the least amongst us, those of us who cannot even help themselves. It is for them that government exists. And I think that this is the day that should mark you know, a turning point in the way we engage, in the language we speak, in the way we, we critique. Yes, we can critique and affirm. We can, we, can, we can disagree with government. We can offer constructive criticism. And I really will invite the opposition in this country at this time to now step into that role as the political opposition, to work with government, point out where there are gaps, where they are you know, ideas for improvement and to offer those ideas so that this president can continue to do the very best that he's able to do, you know, with his tenure uh, for all of us as citizens of Nigeria. All right, so Mr. Felix Moka, we'll just put you on hold today. Is your party that won? So we have a lot of questions to ask you. Thanks for staying with us on TVC News at 1 as we stay with a live coverage of the Supreme Court judgment, which was delivered earlier by a panel of seven justices and um, led by Justice Iyan Gokoro. We're also now staying on reactions to that judgment. Earlier, we saw reaction from uh, members of the APC, members of the president's cabinet, and the president himself has also reacted to that judgment. We've been speaking with the national APC publicity secretary, Felix Moka, and he's with us still. Um, Mr. Moka, just before that break and before we went to Muyo Thomas, you were talking, making a clarion call to the opposition saying that, look, it's time for them to now begin to constructively criticize um, the, the president on his policies and also um, share um, solutions to some of the challenges in the country. But some people will say, look, the litigations are over, but it remains to be seen whether the agitations will end. Will your party make um, a or take a deliberate step to extend a hand to the, a to the PDP and the Labour Party? Look, from the very first day, uh, the president um, of the Federal Republic offered his hand you know, in fellowship to his opponents, those who contested against him, uh, especially um, uh, Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi, he did offer his hand uh, to them to invite them to join him to tackle the challenges of governance in our country. And he still reiterated that position uh, in his reaction uh, to this judgment. And those of us in the party, we, we are very clear about this, that you know, this country belongs to all of us. Um, we had an election, uh, you know, the individuals who were involved who felt uh, that they, you know, uh, that they had grievances approached the courts. The courts, you know, the Court of Appeal uh, sitting at first instance and the Supreme Court have now uh, decided. 
So look, I think at this stage, you know, those who were involved and their supporters need to understand that, you know, the country is bigger than any one person, bigger than the president, bigger than Atiku Abubakar, bigger than Peter Obi, because it involves all of us, you know, us 200 and something million people. So our collective destiny is, is at stake here. So my hope is that, um, you know, this judgment will, I think, be an incentive for those who still felt aggrieved or who feel aggrieved to, you know, rest their grievances and look forward to the next, you know, um, round of election in 2027. But for 2023, I think this is done. So, you know, our hope is that we will continue to reach out and to appeal that, you know, people in the opposition, uh, their leaders and their supporters will put the country first over and above uh, their individual partisan uh, political interests. Hmm. We know that this, this cabinet, the president's cabinet, is, has pretty much taken shape. Um, some would say, look, there is still room for, to bring in one or two persons. And if the president were to extend a hand by, by um, appointment to the PDP and the, and the Labour Party, how will the APC um, National Executive Council or committee react? Look, the president has, you know, complete prerogative uh, to appoint uh, any individual or individuals that he believes bring, I think, to the business of governance some value and some good uh, to help uh, solve some of our national uh, questions. So whether he brings them from the APC or from uh, the opposition parties or from the professional sector or from anywhere as long as they're Nigerians and they have the competencies to, to add value, I think the president will make that call. He's made that call already uh, when you see the likes of, um, you know, former governor of River State, you know, in Jason Wike, as minister of the FCT, who, you know, obviously um, has a different political uh, background. You know, he's brought people like that into the government because he believes in their capacity to help the government to, uh, to, to implement the hope, the renewed hope agenda. So we, we, we are the party, we, are, we stand firmly behind the press, and we will uh, provide that support that he needs uh, to govern this country and to govern this country uh, to the utmost benefit of all of us. While, while it looks like the APC has um, the biggest victory um, in this whole process, because the, the Supreme Court has now affirmed the election of the president. Um, but w when you pay a keen attention to the opposition, it does seem like an alliance seem to, be, uh, to, seem to have been created uh, between th those political parties. Is your, is your party concerned about that, especially as we now head towards, you know, uh, politicking for um, the 2027 at the background anyway, maybe not at the forefront? No, we're not concerned of an alliance between strange bedfellows. I mean, I, quite frankly, I don't see, you know, even though Peter B was um, Atiku's vice presidential candidate in 2019, I don't see anything now now uh, that brings them together, quite frankly, other than just the you know, headline opposition to uh, the president and, and the APC. But, you know, in the actual sense of it, I think that um, APC is not perturbed by You know, any, uh, so because we, we, we intend, and the president has made clear that he intends to offer good and effective governance to Nigerians. And I think Nigerians are the voters, they're the electorate, they're the ones who ultimately will decide in 2027 and beyond 2027 who they choose to give the mantle of leadership to. And I think that for us, you know, uh, being in office today with the president, uh, we have an opportunity to continue to deepen our commitment and to serve Nigerians the way they deserve to be served. And I think as, as long as we discharge that burden of really doing the very best we can for Nigeria, uh, we're confident in 2027 and beyond 2027, uh, the Nigerian electorate will again uh, entrust this uh, job uh, to, to our party, the All Progressives Congress. Mm. And let's talk about one of the biggest um, judgments, as it were. Um, some people will say today, which is that of the certificate uh, controversy. Um, a lot of people were watching to see how, you know, that would play out. And that, and that the Supreme Court said, look, they cannot sit, you know, over that judgment. It should have been decided at the appeal court. And um, what does that mean for your party? What's the implication of this? And, you know, from the get-go, with all my public representation and, uh, on this matter and, and, and discussions, 
you know, I've been very consistent. I'm saying, look, you know, you do not and you cannot at this stage in the process, you know, introduce fresh evidence. And by the way, you know, the Supreme Court was also very clear on this point, that this is not a judgment of a foreign court. This is not uh, a testimony that was taken before a judge in the United States. This was a discovery, uh, a preliminary discovery that was looking to settle you know, the uh, production of documents. So the, the, the registrar who testified in that process, in a law firm, but a law firm, not before a judge. You know, there's a reason that witnesses come before a judge because the judge has to be able to observe that they may know, make an assessment whether they have believable witnesses or not. There's a lot of legal, uh, you know, issues that the judge has to figure out when a, a witness is uh, presenting testimony and getting cross-examined. But this registrar in that process in Chicago was engaged at a preliminary level. And so, and when you suggest that someone forged a certificate, which the president did not, of which he was a graduate of Chicago State University, you, you must you know, come with some seriousness. You must, that's a criminal allegation. So you must prove it to the criminal standard of proof, which is beyond reasonable doubt. And you, know, you, you don't then take a testimony before a law, in a, at a law firm and then elevate it to that level, that pedestal that they tried to do. Which is because said, look, this is a joke. This is even a bad joke. It's beyond a joke. You don't bring such a document to the court and expect the court to just take it in. And at an appellate level, the Supreme Court is the apex court of our land. It's an appeal court. It's not a court of trial. It's not a court of first instance. It's not a court where you review evidence. And the court was clear. All of the period of time that the petitioners had to bring their evidence before the court had long expired. And when that time expires, the courts no longer have jurisdiction uh, to deal with this matter. The Court of Appeal had lost jurisdiction. Therefore, the Supreme Court cannot assume jurisdiction over a matter for trial that the, Supreme Court, the Appeal Court didn't have anymore. So look, you know, all in all, I think that the, the decision today was fantastic. It was, it, was, it was eloquent, it was short, but it was straight to the point. And I think that every lawyer in this country, whether you're on the side of the opposition or on the side of uh, the, the, the president, will agree that this decision is impeccable. It's absolutely unassailable, as the court said. And I, I just want to take that one statement from, from the Supreme Court on that certificate um, controversy where he said, um, no issue for determination by the appellant points on certificate forgery. Um, how would you react to that particular statement? No, what the court was saying was that the, 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 the motion that was brought to uh, uh, urging the Supreme Court to admit that evidence had no basis to stand because it was not pleaded, it was not a ground of appeal, and was not you know, had no relevance in the entire appeal system. So you don't come at this level to try to bring a fact that is, you know, heavily contested, that is terribly contested by the, uh, by the respondents. You don't bring it at this stage because there's no, there's no space, there's no opportunity mm. for, for trying that. Because to try that, you have to actually almost constitute a trial within a trial at the Supreme Court. And that's not, the Electoral Act is very clear. This Electoral matters are sui generis. They, they, they stand on their own and they, they are, you know, of their own, you know, nature. So you can't simply just bring a, a, an evidence at this stage and expect the Supreme Court to begin to call witnesses and examine witnesses and then make it. If you do that, one, you violate the constitutional prescription of time limits for hearing these cases. Second, this case will then be, you know, uh, infinite. You will litigate it for the next you know, 10 years, possibly, uh, and there'll be no end. And we, nobody wants that. We want clarity, we want certainty, we want an end to this process. And today marks the end of this litigation. And we are very pleased with the outcome. Mm. All right, let me also put you on hold as I bring in our senior political correspondent, um, AY, back into the conversation. AY, I want to stay on the certificate controversy because we saw um, a, a lot of press conferences, a lot of media um, razzmatazz, if I will use that word, around um, from the opposition parties around that, that certificate controversy. And then the court says, look, no issue for determination by the appellant points on certificate forgery. What does that tell you? They didn't plead for it, for their plea at the Court of Appeal. 
it wasn't part of what they requested for. And uh, the court just proved today that um, the court is not uh, expected to be a place where you have a Father Christmas seated somewhere to do um, any gifts you didn't, you didn't plead for. It wasn't, it wasn't part of the whole thing. If they had done their own work well before that court of appeal, before the, 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 this would have, they would have filed it in the court of appeal and it would have been trashed out. Maybe it's a pre-election matter, maybe it's post-election matter, it would have been trashed out at the court of appeal level and the Supreme Court is saying that what the, this court of appeal did not touch, we cannot touch it. It's a no, no, no. There's a time frame. You don't expect us to go into what you didn't pray for. That it's not like that. It's against the rule. So the, the Supreme Court said it unequivocally today that no, Mr. Atiku Abaka felt that he had something like a scoop in journalism, we call it a scoop, something big to rely on. And that was his final, final, final thing to bring him to. Actually, the, if the Supreme Court had allowed it or admit, admitted it, it might have been counterproductive. But the Supreme Court is saying that euphoria to the United States of America, everything there, according to Wale Olani the objectivity behind that move and everything, it was questioned by the lawyer of Bola Tinobu, and they are saying that for the time, for the rule of this game, you've gone against the rule of this game, that you didn't pay for it, and so you, you will not get it. And as you, you, you follow that proceedings today, what stood out for you, and what was your key takeaway? The, court, the Supreme Court, they weren't ready to waste our time. They felt that the Court of Appeal had done mm. everything. For me, the Court of Appeal lead the foundation. They've done 85% of the work. The Supreme Court is just saying, look, let me check what the lower court has done. Is it in line? Is it in line? Is it in line? They cross-checked everything. And from cross-examining it, I expected out of the seven judges, I expected a dissenting view. Do you understand that, look, what, because there was a time people were even, members of the public were even questioning the language of the Court of Appeal. The Supreme Court actually addressed that. that they saw nothing wrong with the language deployed. So after putting the spotlight into what the Court of Appeal actually adjudicated, the Supreme Court said, look, we all concur, seven of them. <laughs> seven, all concurred. So it's oh and dry, done and dusted, precious. So I wanted to, because a lot of people say, look, and that's the truth. Um, it's within their constitutional right to go to court. Whoever wins or you know, whoever loses election, you have the right to go to court. Yes. But it, sometimes, you know, we see the media frenzy around it. We see yes. supporters of both parties, you know, you know, and loggerheads, whether on social media or in person. You know, just through that process, what does that mean for us, you know, as a nation? What's the impact of that on us as a nation? We have to heal. After this exercise, President Bola Tinobu, we had to, you know, you know, the confidence that Nigerians had actually given to him. We have to work, and this country must work, and we must come together as a nation. That election actually divided us, so we must reach out to all our sundry. And these, uh, the gladiators must come together and work with President Bola Tinobu to build a nation. We have a nation to build. After that election, we're badly fractured, which is a normal cycle after any year, the four years of election and everything. So, and um, the National Assembly, we have to work on our electoral process. We have to work on it and to see with how they continue to perfect it. It's an ongoing work, but above all, we have to heal as a nation and move forward. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. Because the sentiment expressed on the social media, the Supreme Court actually said it today, like the issue of the IREV. And yes, Nigerians were concerned and, and that truly they are meant to be concerned about this thing. So we have to go back to the drawing board and see how they te we deploy our technology. Mm -hmm. INEC. I was just going to ask you that. Like, this work. doesn't mean that INEC should become complacent in that regard. But if anything were to go on in 2027, this does give INEC some level of credibility to say, look, um, there is already a set ruling mm. in this regard that with or without the IRF, you know, it doesn't mean except that election results the are not credible. Assembly, except the National Assembly fine-tune the mm. law exactly. to accommodate mm. the IRF when it becomes a legal issue. But most Nigerians, they did not see that loophole there. It was just a, a, an added incentive promised by the Independent National Electoral Commission. It wasn't written in black and white. 
That's what the Supreme Court has just proved today, that it did not substantially alter the process. So that incentive, maybe INEC will need to go for that at all. Maybe in 2027, it will no longer be a kind of incentive. It's going to be a legal thing. That is when we can hold INEC accountable that, oh, it's part of the law, that you have to upload this in real time. Failure to do it, that will bring a question mark on the election. But for now, the Supreme Court has spoken. Mm. Let me also get um, Felix Mocha's um, um, reaction to that, to that judgment on the IRF, um, where the, the judges say that, look, um, although non-functioning of the IRF may have reduced confidence of Nigerians in the electoral system, um, but the failure to transmit results to IRF did not affect the election. Um, Mr. Mocha, how do, do you react to that? No, that, that, that was exactly um, as stated by the tribunal that the Supreme Court just reiterated. And I agree completely. Because the, the Electoral Act is very clear in the authority that it gave to INEC to determine how uh, election results are collated. And, you know, look, as even the petitioners recognize, these were part of INEC's own provisioning, their guidelines, you know, in their zeal to make, you know, the process more transparent to Nigerians to give Nigerians a window. I mean, just like today, for example, you know, this judgment was televised nationally. It was on live television. But that is not the norm. The Supreme Court, in its own discretion, decided to uh, you know, allow cameras and TV stations and you know, the media to you know, televise the judgment nationally today. But tomorrow, when the government is, the Supreme Court is sitting on a different matter, I don't think the TBC or AIT or Arise News will simply just carry cameras and walk into the courtroom. Because that's not the norm. The court decided today to do so. So you cannot now tomorrow file an action in court to say that the Supreme Court disallowed cameras in the courtroom tomorrow because they did you know, allow it today. That's exactly what INEC did. INEC decided on their own to give Nigerians more access to information during the elections to be able to view uh, some of these you know, results uh, simultaneously as they were being uploaded. But that then did not become, by any legal or even common sense standards, that you know, the results uploaded to IREF would then become the basis for collation. The law prescribed how results were to be collated. So look, you know, I think that the, the courts, this, this, like the courts said, these are elementary issues, really. But any, any objective lawyer or reader of the Electoral Act will see that there was no basis to suggest that because results were not uploaded in real time to IRF, therefore, the election was flawed to the degree, to a substantial degree, that the results then became uh, not, you know, uh, you know, acceptable. And the court rested that matter again. And I think that, you know, I, I agree completely. I think that was not an issue to begin with for anybody who is familiar with the law and the way uh, the law, you know, is written uh, in this instance. All right. Um, I will also put Mr. Boka on hold now as we get to um, cross over to the presidential villa where a uh, uh, state house correspondent is standing by Femi Akande to give us um, just an update from um, the state house. Femi, talk to us about the mood. The president has already reacted. We've seen uh, pretty much reaction as well from some, some members of the president's cabinet. But talk to us about the mood at the State House. Well, uh, precious, there's intense excitement here in the State House. We have seen um, visitors thronging uh, into the State House, state governors, ministers. Everyone is coming to congratulate the president and also congratulate themselves as members of the governing All Progressives Congress. You know, this um, judgment of the Supreme Court is an affirmation of the victory uh, declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission. But, well, uh, they are also taking um, all of these um, with all sense of our modesty. They are saying, well, it's time to move on. It's time, uh, like we've seen the uh, statement of President Bola Tinubuda, it's time to move on and build the country. It's time for governance. He has uh, stretched out um, the olive uh, branch to all, other mem all members of other political parties who went to court to contest uh, the 
victory uh, that was given that he got at the presidential election now he's saying that well it's time to begin to build um, the country there are so many uh, issues to address in the country from security to education to health care and all of that and president bola tinubu's um, renewed hope agenda captures all of that and how he intends uh, uh, to ensure that nigerians feel uh, the impact of his government well i think now the presidency and indeed president bola tinubu will be able to concentrate more on governance before now you know the court cases here and there were a bit of um, distractions we have seen so many uh, commentators, people with different uh, opinions, uh, say different things about um, the victory of the president. But, you know, with this uh, affirmation by the Supreme Court, the presidency and indeed the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will be able to concentrate on governance. Precious. And as you interact with the, the visitors, uh, what's the key message, you know, from, from everyone who has come to visit? Yes, uh, the key message from all of them is that it's time to unite and line up behind uh, President Bola Tinubu's administration. A lot of them say, indeed, they know that before now the president uh, won the election. But, you know, um, just as it happens with politics, uh, where people are not uh, satisfied with uh, certain things they would want to uh, contest in court, so they just waited for the court uh, to decide um, the fate of, of, of um, the of that uh, election. But you know, at the end of the day, what um, they are saying is that, well, to con first to congratulate President Bola Tinubu and then um, also ask people to uh, begin to unite, support the government, support uh, the president of the pres uh, the government of President Bola Tinubu, that it is not a government of APC, but it is a government of uh, all Nigerians. And President Bola Tinubu will ensure that uh, he runs an inclusive administration. I can see from the pictures, um, live pictures, or sorry, from moments ago, not live pictures. Um, I can see that those visitors are also members of the opposition as well. I can see the Bayelsa State, um, Bayelsa State governor there amongst the, the visitors that the president received. Um, Doye Diri, what more can you tell us about that? Well, for some of um, the members of the opposition, a lot of them has, have shown tremendous um, support to the administration of President Paul Latinobu. For them, as, as soon as he was declared um, winner and sworn in as President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, the party lines have been blurred. Uh, all party differences have been set aside. Uh, they now see him as um, the leader of the country that should be supported to ensure that he delivers uh, good governance for Nigerians. And that is what, uh, that is what uh, the visit of the Bayelsa State Governor, who is a member of the People's Democratic Party, represents here today. Thank you, Femi, for that update. Um, keep an eye on those visits and the, the messages for us uh, as well. Thank you, Femi. Right, let's get back to Felix Mboka. Um, are you surprised that, that the, the, the Bayelsa State Governor is one of those who visited the, the president? Yes, I think, that, you know, as I said earlier, the, the, the decision of the court today, and in fact, even the announcement by INEC that the president won the election, was sufficient um, reason for every patriot to rally. Because we cannot spend our lifetime disputing the result of an election conducted by the legitimate uh, umpire in our elections. And that is INEC. We, we cannot. I think that. You know, other countries go through this process. The United States, you know, one of the leading democracies in the world, uh, you know, had an election and it, it was disputed. But it was, it was rested and, you know, President Joe Biden has been governing and governing with, you know, a gusto. And I don't think there's anybody, even those who are uh, with the former President Trump, who think that the president, uh, they, they, they don't win an election. I don't think anybody is seriously contesting that. But look, I think that I'm glad that, you know, Governor Deary and uh, other opposition figures are around the president to offer their congratulations. That's the spirit. That's what we're saying. That's what needs to happen. You can hold on to your political persuasion, uh, you know, hang on to your party. But this is a moment of, you know, national reconciliation. It's a, nation, a moment for, you know, patriotism for everyone to come together to offer a hand with the president so that we can overcome for the sake of our people and in their own best interest. Mm. 
Thank you so much, um, Felix Moka, the National Publicity Secretary of the APC. Nigerians are waiting eagerly um, the delivery of the Renewed Hope agenda um, from this administration. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. And to our uh, senior political correspondent, um, thank you so much for sharing your years of experience and insights on covering politics um, with us uh, today. It's a pleasure, I was. All right, so um, that's where we leave it now. That's the news this hour. We'll, I'll be handing over to my colleague, Tolulok Belgunjabi, for Business Nigeria. Thanks for watching.